are, are quite useful. Uh, we also try to get uh, some basic national data, uh, but not too much because uh, then they'll start talking about m a more of a local issue than a global issue. And in this kind of exercise, we, we, we need to have some, some level of harmony. And uh, the best harmony is to look at the globe <laughs> rather than the country. Uh, and in that way, they can start to uh, think about things outside of their own uh, context. And it, we, we, we think it's very useful. And sometimes amazing comments uh, start to arrive uh, and uh, exchange uh, are, quite, uh, are quite challenging because uh, uh, some participant may come from a, a high, highly polluted country because this is Asia Pacific, you know. And some may come from a very underdeveloped, uh, yet want to develop uh, industrialize their industrialization and don't care about pollution. So you have different stages uh, of development, and 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 to get some sort of consensus is a real, uh, real interesting uh, process. So that that's that that's more important than facts and figures. But we do have uh, basic facts and figures. Okay, any other comments, questions? Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, I just uh, want to, I guess, first of all, echo uh, Morisant's uh, comments that um, um, I guess you're an extremely humble person. Uh, you started off by um, perhaps mentioning that you might not have so much to offer in terms of the perspective on adaptive governance, uh, and then you proceeded to give some of the best examples of, uh, of, of adaptive governance that uh, could be compiled in, in one example. Um, so I want to, on behalf of the, the SD Planet, thank you for, for sharing uh, many of the tools that you, that you discussed. I mean, you, you gave an exa excellent example of, of, of integrated and forward-looking analysis through the scenario planning and the backcasting approach, which framed your whole policy approach. And then the use of LCA tools, uh, integrated thinking tools, is as an important part of the of, of the toolkit. Uh, you also m stressed how multi working with multiple agencies and multiple perspectives is critical for is for deciding how to move forward on on your on your technology policy and and you brought in elements of, of the importance of decentralization I think and the local government approach uh, and, and the emphasis at that level and then the variation of of of, of, of approaches and policies that within the, the, the program that you described is really quite elaborate and so I want to thank you for an excellent example of adaptive governance. Uh, I do have a quick question though. Um, what could you share perhaps with, uh, with us some of the, the, uh, the drivers behind your agency's decision to use scenario planning and backcasting in such a rigorous manner to help formulate and, and, and think about your your policies for the, on this particular situation and because it's not it's it's quite atypical for for agencies to really take such a, a really uh, quite a comprehensive forward-looking approach to start off and uh, I think it's important to understand how you got to that point thank you for for your kind words uh, to, to answer your question uh, personally I think uh, I think uncertainties and impacts are the two key elements that uh, we think have been very useful uh, in the many exercises on scenario planning uh, that we have conducted we, we have conducted quite a few uh, the last one the last one we conducted for the Ministry of Public Health uh, on forensic science the future of forensic science and we, we think that we, we at, when we first uh, uh, took the job, we thought, you know, we we're going to deal with a lot of dead people. Uh, but in the end, it becomes the legal issue that surfaces, the legal issue, uh, and uh, and the adaptation that uh, different uh, different agencies that are directly or indirectly involved with forensic uh, <laughs> thing uh, have have to deal with and how to consolidate them. So it, it's amazing how, how it ended up. Uh, uh, the, the reason I said uncertainties uh, and impacts 
are, are, are quite useful is because a lot of times when we conduct regular typical workshops we also we, we all usually we talk about the, the SWOT analysis you know and we come up with a, a long list of SWOTs you know especially the the weakness list you know uh, and I've, many times I find it not quite useful it's just a, a, a quick snaps you know uh, not so meaningful you know but once we encourage them to think about uncertainties then they start to dig down uh, in, in from their life experience you know uh, the experience of whatever uncertainties that come up and climate change is is a classic uh, theme uh, to think about uncertainties and it's uncertainty from your own life up to uncertainty of the universe you know so so there's no limit the horizon is 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 the limit so uncertainty is is quite nice uh, impact is nice in terms of uh, policy strategies because if you use impact as as uh, as the element then you can be more strategic among hundred issues that you have to deal with if you if you trying to pinpoint <coughs> the high impact or even low impact uh, elements then it's possible to come up with about 10 for example and if you cross these two the uncertainties and the impacts then you get nice stories high impact low uncertainty high uncertainty high impact you know yeah, you you have you will have a lot of interesting things to work on, and from there, once you uh, create stories, and by stories I I'm serious, you know, it's a serious life stories. Uh, then you trigger it down to the strategies, as I mentioned earlier, to to accommodate those future stories, you know. So let's say you you have four parallel groups doing four different scenarios then you come up with four different sets of strategies the wonderful thing is if you get all those four sets of strategies and compare them usually you will find some common strategies and those common strategies you do it no matter what you see uh, in my experience human resource always come up you know so no matter what happened you know develop your human resource you know. uh, but for those that are not common sometimes they are quite useful also those specific strategies so you don't neglect them you also critically consider them so this is a short answer to, to your question okay uh, one more question uh, or comment please thank you mr. chairman <coughs> Thank you, Dr. Bichet, for your presentation, especially about the adaptive strategy for climate change, about which I have no comment except compliments. However, you have alluded to the science and technology innovation 10-year plan. And you also commented that the low spending on R&D of Thailand of only about just over 0.2 percent but in your plan you are addressing four direction and these four issues I consider consider as factors for your planning rather than the direction for your planning my question is if you are using these four directions and which are wide-ranging my question is how can you stay focused and then the with such a limited budget thank you thank you that's that's always a uh, headache for planners uh, I must say that uh, we have reduced to four from about 30 so <laughs> number wise it's we, we are pleased uh, but you're right uh, that there, there are still many comments of you know with limited resources how can you do all these four the way we will do it, uh, hopefully is the right way, uh, is that uh, for these four, we will also 
uh, get into four uh, get into a number a, a small